welcome back to my channel Pradhi Chadai, myself Shailesh. So let's start from where we dropped off. So we went through all the SQL operations. We defined data definition language, data query language, data manipulation language and data control language. Now let's start with the data definition language. We will also have a practical session we will, where we will see how these uh, kinds of command work in a practical SQL developer session. So what is basically a data definition language? Data definition language is basically SQL commands that are used to define a schema of a database. Now what is a schema? So as of now, while we are starting from scratch, you can assume a schema as just a boundary defined inside a database where a particular user works. So there could be multiple schemas inside a database. Under a project, we have multiple schemas and different people work in the same project under different schemas. Schemas are actually created to define a structure for the data to tell me how the data is placed, what relationships are there between multiple tables or multiple database objects, what kinds of procedures or triggers are kept inside a schema. All those are kept inside one schema to keep it meaningful and also to restrict other users from intervening in your work. So that all your work are kept inside one schema and you can use it, access it, drop it or create it at any particular time. So you can say that inside a database, a database is a broader term. Inside a database you have multiple schemas and different users work under different projects in a schema. You can have access to multiple schemas, you can restrict people's access to your schema so that they do not intervene in your code or anything. So it's basically a structure. Schema is a structure that is defined, uh, designed by a data architect and provided to you. Under your schema, you have different database objects on which you can work. So data definition language is to create all your database objects, drop your database objects to define what kind of objects you have. All those comes under DDL. Those are named as data definition language. So what kind of commands you have in DDL? You have create command, you have drop. So as the name suggests, create will create database objects. Drop with the drop, you can drop all the whatever database objects you want to drop. Alter can do a modification in your created database objects. Truncate also comes under DDL commands. Truncate basically removes all the data that is present inside a table. You don't have to, I mean, worry about uh, deleting each and every row or something. If you do not want to use the data of a particular table, you can keep the structure of the table and truncate the data from the table. Your table would be as it is. Then in further in future, if you want to populate your table, you can uh, fire an insert command to populate your table. Then you even have a rename uh, detail command that renames your database objects. So that we will see in the live session, the practical session. So let's uh, move to the practical session creating and seeing what actually is a DDL command. So now see, as you can see, this is a SQL developer. This is basically a tool where you can uh, fire your queries, create uh, uh, data base objects. You can even view them as you can see in this left side connections under connections window. You can see multiple uh, things like demo. For now, we are working under demo schema as I explained. So for us, demo is the schema. Under demo, we are working. Under demo, you will find different tabs for tables, views, additioning views, 
indexes, packages, procedures. These and all we will learn gradually. So for now, let's start with tables. Under tables, if you see, you will find two tables, employee one, employee two, which I have created. I can show you that these employee tables even to have data inside so for this we will fire a select command over the table the syntax would be select star from the table name you can see that these are the data that is present inside the employee one table so right now we are dealing with DDL data definition language so i'll show you how to create a table so let's write the same type of table so let us suppose we have a student table we'll write create table we'll, inside the packet we will give the columns that are present inside the table so let us have a column with student id now in front of the column you need to give, provide the data type so student id would basically be a number so we can keep it an integer then you can even have a student name as the column so where here a hundred length you can have a student address type type where care and length of the data is hundred. We have the syntax over here on the so right now if you'll see under tables we have only two tables employee one and employee two now we are going to create the table student table student has been created i'll show you i'll refresh this your student table has been created and if you'll see you have student id student name and student address as the column names the data type you can see number the default is 38 bit and the type is data type where care for student name see the length we gave as 100 the student address we gave as 100 now similarly the way you created the table you can even drop the table if you do not want to use the table and you are sure that nobody else is gonna use it you can drop it from your schema so for that you'll file a drop command drop table and then table name and you can fire this command so the table is dropped but still you are able to see it over here as it is not refreshed let's refresh it once i refresh the student table went off To move ahead further to see other commands, let's recreate it. So the student table has been recreated. Now we are not going to fire this drop table. So that we do not accidentally fire it, we will comment it. So how you will comment in SQL developer, you will put double dash over here. And then you can see that this has been deactivated. You won't be accidentally firing it. Now let's uh, try to insert some value in the table student so let's have the student id be 100 and 1 name as Is a var care you need to put it in under quotes. You don't need uh, quotes over here as this is an integer. A number will be definitely accepted inside student ID. You 
will give a student address let it be Mumbai. let's fire this insert statement and see the difference. so one row has been inserted similarly if you want to insert another row let's uh, change the student ID Let this be inside this statement. Populate the statement in the table. How will we verify that this uh, insert data has been inserted in my table? You can fire a select statement over the table. And you can see the result. Here you can see that student ID is 101, student name is Sam, student address is Mumbai, similarly student ID is 102 over here, student name is Tom, and student address is Delhi. I'll show you what Truncate does. Under this student table, right now we have two rows of data. Now I will fire a main command. you what happens. See, table student truncated. You can see the logs also over here. The query result would be over here and the log output would be inside the script output. So now we have truncated this table. Truncated means all the data inside the student is vanished, removed. So now if I fire this select command, there will be no rows inside student table. As you can see this. Now let's suppose we want to rename this table. Now before that, let's uh, find out what alter does. Now suppose I have the student table and I want to add another column like uh, subject inside table student. So we'll fire alter command. Alter will provide the add keyword over here add column will provide the data type and then we will find this Okay, there seems to be some mistake. I think there won't be this problem. See. Table student has been altered. Now if I'll refresh it over here and show you the student structure. This table. If we see, we can see starting column under student table. This has been added. As you can see over here. We can even rename this table from student to something else. Let's suppose you want to rename the table to student info. We can fire an alter command, alter table. And rename to student you can fire this command and the table student has been entered. Now if I suppose fire this select statement over here on student table I won't find this table. See, table or view does not exist. Why? Because we have renamed the table student to student info. If I'll refresh over here, we can see that student will be removed and student info will be added. See, student is removed and student info will be added. So these are the commands under DDL. 
which you can practice at your home also. You can have a session of SQL Developer. You can install SQL Developer and practice these things at your home. So for now, let's uh, stop this video. We'll meet again in the next video. Thank you for viewing my video and also do subscribe and like my videos.